Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA Network Plus certification training course, now caffeine free. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about commonly used TCP and UDP ports. We're going to talk about what's in section 1.2 of our Network Plus exam, that is the N10-004 exam, where we need to identify commonly used TCP and UDP default ports. And we're going to go through all of these different TCP ports and all of these different UDP ports. This is a module on memorization. Now, fortunately, we already know all these protocols because, of course, you watched our previous module where we talked about all of these protocols. So Hopefully, it'll be very easy now just to add port numbers onto the end of these things. It'll be very easy. And if, if you work with these day to day, what you'll find is you probably already know a number of these port numbers already. Now, before we talk about what application goes with what port, let's talk about this idea of TCP ports and UDP ports and what they are. And when we look at protocols, uh, IP version 4 uses these TCP and UDP ports a lot. Now, these are the things you have to have to be able to communicate with IP version 4, whether you're using UDP or whether you're using TCP. It's one or the other, by the way. If you're running an IP packet, it's either going to have UDP in it or it's going to have TCP. It's not going to have both. You have to choose one of those. Now, the packet has to have a server IP address. And it has to have an application port number for the server. We also need, of course, our client machine needs an IP address. And it needs to send information out via a port number. So those are the four pieces that we need to be able to have a successful communication via IP version 4 and via TCP or UDP. Now, we're also here this term called non-ephemeral ports. These are port numbers that are permanent. Ephemeral ports are temporary. That's what ephemeral means. This is usually port numbers that are on a server or a service. We're going to learn in this module that HTTP for web servers uses TCP port 80. It's always going to use port 80 to be able to communicate on that particular server. So we're going to say that that port is non-ephemeral. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to change. It's always going to be port 80 when we connect to it. That's a little different than port numbers that are usually used on our client workstations when we're talking to that web server. On our client machines, we're very much using ephemeral ports. They're ports that are temporarily created so that we can talk to that web server. Once we're finished with that web server communication, we shut down that communication, and we don't use that port number again, at least not until we may cycle all the way back through again. Now, this is usually determined in real time, and it's usually done by our client workstation. Some client workstations will use these ports in order. Some will randomly pick a port. It just depends on the type of IP stack you have on your machine. But when you hear the terms non-ephemeral and ephemeral, just keep in mind those are ports that are permanent and ports that are used temporarily. Now let's talk about what a port number actually is. Now a TCP port number or a UDP port number is simply any number between 0 and 65535. Port number 0 usually isn't used very often. It's used only in very rare circumstances, but it is a legal port number. The idea is that these port numbers are used to, to use services or to be able to communicate to a service on another machine. Now, most servers, like web servers, will use these non-ephemeral port numbers or permanent port numbers. But that's not always the case. They aren't always these number 80 is always a web server. It's just a number. We're just choosing a number. It just happens to be one that most devices expect to have on a web server. If we're connecting to Google, we just expect that Google's going to be using port 80. It's just a number we've all come up with and we've agreed on. If you wanted to put your web server on port 79, you could do that. You'd have to tell people it's on port 79 because otherwise your browser wouldn't understand that. Your browser is expecting your web server to be on port 80. But just keep in mind that it's just a number. It's just one we've all come up with and then we all agree with. But it doesn't have to be that. You can make it anything you'd like. Port numbers are designed to be for communication. Just because you put your web server on port 79 doesn't make it any more secure. It's very, very simple for me to use some programs to go out onto the internet and ask your server what port numbers are available. And it will tell me that port 79 is available because that's the only way that port 79 is going to work is if it advertises itself if somebody asks. So this is not for security. Port numbers are not a security tool. They're just used to allow communication. Service port numbers, as we mentioned, need to be well known. And that's what this module is about. Certain applications have well known port numbers. Port 80 is well known. 
to be on web servers. Port 443 is the well-known TCP port for encrypted ports on that web server using HTTPS protocol. And as we go through this module, you'll see that these numbers are extremely well known and you're going to run to, into them over and over again in your just normal job, the normal things that you do with networking. It's important to keep in mind that the TCP port numbers are not the same as UDP port numbers. You can, on a single server, have a TCP port 80 in use and a UDP port 80 in use. They are completely separated in how they work. So those numbers between 0 and 65535, I can have that range for TCP. There is a completely unique and separate range for UDP, and they can all be in use all at once if you want them to be. It's very common to see things like port 53 TCP and port 53 UDP be open at the same time on a server that's providing DNS services. So don't be thrown by that. It just happens to be that they are very separate in how they work and just keep them separated in your mind.